All right, guys, welcome back. So today, I'm gonna be replacing the main jet on this Honda engine. Uh, all of the HSS series engines are EPA and CARB emission approved. Uh, basically, they're underfueled for the purpose of emission standards. And simply replacing the jet with a size, roughly two sizes bigger, just unlocks all the latent potential inside, inside these motors. So on a GX390 like we have here, a 110 jet works really well. On a GX270, a 92 jet works really well. And on a GX200, a 78 jet works really well. So let's get started. Just for ease, we'll put it up on a jack stand. Now, it would have been a good idea at this point to have already ran the carburetor dry by shutting the fuel valve off, um, but there's a nice little drain valve on here anyway. As long as you have a container to catch it, you should be okay. So, snowblower engines have shrouding. The shrouding contains the heat of the motor so that things like linkages and various other components uh, don't ice up and freeze. On this case, it's just three bolts and one nut to remove this lower shroud. like that. Okay. Next, before we remove this bowl, we want to make sure that we mark exactly where this carburetor bowl is. Um, it's not going to affect how the float seals or how the float moves and how the needle seals, but it's just nice to return it in that the same position because it gives proper access to the drain valve. So I already have a nice little mark there from the last time, just so you know. Now, there's gonna be a little bit of fuel left in here, so I'm just gonna open the valve, and let it drain out. Maybe an ounce. Okay, next, we have to remove the 10 millimeter bolt holding the bowl. Even though we drained it, or if you shut the fuel valve off and ran the engine until it stalled, there's always gonna be a little bit of gas left in the lower portion of this bowl. So have a rag ready, have some towels. Once you crack it loose, it's gonna start dripping. Okay, on this bolt is a sealing washer. Make sure you don't lose this. While you have the carb off, inspect it. Make sure there's no debris in there, uh, any varnish. Uh, if you're working on an older machine, potentially you may have some black specks in there. That could be uh, signs of fuel hoses that are degrading that could potentially clog the jet. So you may want to address that. Honda has a nice little sediment bowl located right here. I know mine's in fine shape, so I'm not going to bother, but if you want to, you can simply drop the sediment bowl, clean that out too. Now, it's time to remove the jet. It's very important that you use a proper screwdriver for this. You need a flathead, it needs to be in good condition, and it needs to be nice and narrow like this. This is the example of the improper screwdriver for this. You see how it tapers out? it's gonna affect your ability to get on the jet properly. We're dealing with soft metal, so you have to make sure that you have it inserted securely before you wear out the surfaces that the screwdriver needs to contact. Otherwise, you have yourself a jet that is stuck. If you only have an old screwdriver like this, if you have a metal file, a grinder, you could always just grind it down so it's nice and slender like this one. OK. 
Okay. You wanna make sure that this screwdriver is inserted securely. Press it in, wiggle it around a little bit, move it back and forth. You will know when it's in there correctly. Once you start turning it, you can screw it out. Located above this jet is an emulsion tube. So as this jet falls out, the emulsion tube might fall out with it. You have to be prepared to catch it. You do not want to drop anything. In this case, they got stuck. So place your hand under it, get your little screwdriver, give it a little tap. There's the tube, there's the jet. Simple as that. Okay, now I'm gonna grab my proper jet, which this is an aftermarket jet. So this one says, 4.3 on it. It's a 110 jet just in uh, thousandths of an inch instead of millimeters. 110 is 1.10 millimeters, which is the same as 43 thousandths. So you're going to take your emulsion tube, plop it back in, take your jet, pop it back in, and get your screwdriver ready. And you're just going to gently work it back into the carburetor. Okay, once you have a little bit of resistance, that's when you wanna make sure that you have the screwdriver properly seated. Wiggle it back and forth, make sure you're good. And then you're just gonna snug it that little bit. It's soft material, it's not going anywhere, you don't need to over tighten it. Now we reinstall the bowl. There's a few precautions you need to take care of. When you're looking at this float, you have to be certain that nothing moved on you. You want this float to move freely up and down. Make sure this hinge pin is located nicely staggering the support arms and inspect that the rubber sealing O-ring is 100% in place and intact. Now nothing moved for me, so we're ready to go. I'm gonna grab your bolt, your bolt with the sealing washer and you're gonna reference the line that was drawn earlier. Wiggle the bowl around. Make sure it's seated nicely up against that O-ring. Once it is, this bolt is just gonna thread right in, no problem. Bam. Finger tight, and then just a little snugging action. That's all, I'm not doing anything crazy here. Just enough to get it to seal. You don't want to over tighten any of these things. And we're going to replace our cover. I like to start all of the bolts and the nuts before I do any final tightening. Once you have them all started, go ahead and start snugging. so for the bowl to refill completely. So no rush, give it a second. Uh, you're gonna want to inspect the bowl and make sure that nothing's leaking. Um, if you've done everything correct, then you should have zero problems. Uh, if you're a little weary and it's the first time you're ever doing something, you know, maybe you don't put the shrouding back on just yet. Turn the valve on, give it a minute or two, go do something else, kill some time, come back and check to make sure that there's no leakage. I know this thing's ready to go. I'm not concerned. Thank you very much for watching the video.